Hello my dear students, how are you? Hope you are having good time in this very pandemic situation. You know that um, where there is darkness, there is light as well. Very soon um, the light will come in our life, penetrating this darkness we have been facing because of this pandemic. pandemic. Uh, my dear students, once again welcome to this video tutorial. Uh, we have been starting this all right um, in my uh, last video we started uh, the second lesson of class 9 my dear students uh, that was not complete let's complete today uh, from this class okay in the previous video we studied about uh, the types of classification of society based on various bases Similarly, classification of society on the basis of different philosophers, uh, anthropologists and uh, sociologists. Today, uh, we are going to study in detail uh, as a part of our course that one more classification of society that is uh, classification of society based on subsistence strategy. That means what techniques, what methods, what means uh, people use for the survival for the livelihood or for for enhancing uh, uplifting uh, their uh, lifestyle as well as their society what different technology techniques methods means people use based on that society can be categorized society can be classified into various you know categories various types uh, based on subsistence strategy there are six types of societies as i have written on the board look at here types of society classification of society based on subsistence strategy there are six types of society number one hunting and gathering society pastoral society horticultural society agrarian or it is also called agricultural society industrial society and post industrial society my dear students number one as i said hunting and gathering society this is considered as the beginning of the human society what did i say beginning of the human society okay uh, different historians different anthropologists or sociologists have different you know views regarding the uh, date or time uh, for the beginning of the human society but uh, you know approximately we can say around 12,000 years ago this type of society began in the human world let's say uh, hunting and gathering society what are the major characteristics of hunting and gathering society it is considered as the simplest form of society simplest form in the sense that only biological survival was the ultimate goal of human beings only biological survival was the ultimate goal of human being so they uh, they did not have very organized society they used to live in the forest in a group and uh, by hunting animals and gathering edible fruits in the forest they used to maintain their biological survival so that it is it is the or it was the simplest form of society okay began in the human world my dear students another there was no any social relationship in this type of society i mean to say no marriage no family no relatives okay in this type of society people used you know eastern weapons or uh, the hand operated different weapons for hunting animals and killing animals uh, in order to maintain their livelihood okay so uh, basically the um, human beings were the consumers not the producers in this type of society uh, there was no clear um, division of the labor or division of work but uh, generally men were involved in um, hunting animals whereas women used to collect the edible fruits from the forest for the survival of life 
my dear students these were the major features or characteristics of uh, hunting and gathering society as i said the beginning of the indian society uh, approximately began around 12000 years ago in this world and uh, biological survival was the main concern of human being so that it was the simplest form of society and uh, mean and women uh, generally mean used to involve in hunting animals women used to involve in gathering or uh, edible fruits from the forest there was no any social relationship uh, no marriage no family no relatives okay so it was the hunting and gathering society second pastoral society my dear students when people realized that only by hunting and gathering edible fruits they could not be able to you know satisfy their needs okay and necessities especially for the biological survival then they started you know rearing the animals okay i mean to say pastoral society is the society in which people depend on the domesticated animals okay and um, you know this pastoral society began when hunting and gathering society failed to satisfy the human needs or let's say um, the people uh, you know uh, had to face uh, different challenges you know even at, even they had the risk of life while hunting animals okay, while living in the forest that is why uh, slowly and gradually you know they uh, transformed the society i mean to say they you know uh, started um, changing their strategy of uh, survival and uh, instead of you know um, uh, hunting animals they started uh, you know rearing such animals okay and uh, by uh, such uh, reared animals domesticated animals they uh, used to fulfill their different needs and necessities this type of society is known as pastoral society i repeat the society depending on domesticated or reared animals for the survival is known as pastoral society this society came into existence when the hunting and gathering society could not satisfy fulfill the needs and necessities of the people you know that um, you know uh, when people uh, get into the different problems such problems uh, you know uh, develop the solutions okay and there is a, there is a saying that uh, uh, necessity is the mother of invention all right when people you know really fall into the need of something then from such need different inventions you know um, are developed um, you know human mind is very you know deep innovative mind uh, human minds um, because of innovative human minds you know they have um, transformed their society okay uh, this is the pastoral society is also one of the examples gradually you know uh, transforming okay and uh, in comparison to hunting and gathering society in the pastoral society to some extent people um, could fulfill their needs and necessities by rearing the animals okay all right pastoral society in the pastoral society uh, there was no you know um, very uh, significant division of the society but uh, society could be divided as uh, the people having more animals or the people having less animals there there was that kind of division of the society okay and third one horticultural society okay the society depending on depending on cultivating fruits and vegetables is called horticultural society as i said in the hunting is you know or hunting and gathering is 
uh, people used to collect uh, different edible fruits from the forest. Later, later, okay, uh, they started, you know, growing or cultivating such fruits when uh, their, you know, uh, permanent settlement started, permanent settlement started in the society. Then they gradually you know, started the cultivation. Okay, horticulture, horticulture. In horticulture, what happens? Uh, there is the cultivation of fruits and vegetables, and people survive. Okay, by cultivating the vegetables and fruits. Nowadays, it has been a very important you know source of income in many societies. Okay. Uh, only by depending on uh, horticulture too, people can uh, obtain good income, people can earn uh, handsome income and with that income they can easily survive. There, ha there are many, you know, many countries, many societies where people pursue this occupation, okay? and survive their life for example especially there are some um, societies um, which are um, i mean to say there are uh, societies uh, based on agriculture okay uh, dominant of agricultural uh, uh, sorry uh, dominant of horticultural society my day students uh, um, especially um, you know kenya and new guinea kenya and new guinea are you know popular for the horticulture similarly uh, southern europe of the world you can say the garden of the world southern europe um, this is also very popular for horticulture okay all right my dear students as i as we discussed here hunting and gathering society pastoral society and horticultural society now let's shift to agrarian society agrarian society it is also called agricultural society the society based on agricultural production okay is known as agrarian society or agricultural society when the human beings developed permanent settlement in the particular area okay then there started uh, systematic cultivation of lands okay systematic cultivation of lands and uh, along with the beginning of uh, uh, systematic cultivation of lands the agricultural or agrarian society began in the world it is the i mean to say many countries in the world are agricultural country japan is also one of the examples of agricultural country my dear students okay as i said agrarian society is the society based on agricultural production gas crops food crops okay and different uh, fruits and vegetables um, are grown and people survive on such you know production of uh, agricultural production my dear students um, you know uh, basically in agrarian society you know two types of uh, human class human class you know is found one is called feudal class another is called peasant class feudal class is the land owning class okay feudal lords feudal lords used to you know hold the you know large portion of lands okay but peasants did not have their own lands feudal class used to control over the lands and the peasants used to work in the lands you know taken control by the feudal i mean to say there was a huge gap between the feudal class and the peasant class peasant class ha had a very miserable life economically they, they were very poor okay but as i said feudal class was the aristocratic class and uh, this class used to hold the um, large portion of lands okay and exploit over the peasant class my dear students 
all right another as you know that along with the time when um, human society kept on developing you know kept on transform transforming and i mean to say when human minds started you know uh, you know finding various you know ways of promoting you know uplifting enhancing their society then human society got advanced and advanced uh, you know um, the examples we have after a agri uh, agrarian society or agricultural society you know the human society entered into the era of industrial age or industrial society began in the world okay you know that industrial society reflects highly disciplined way of human energy and skills combined with natural resources and technology to produce goods and services for satisfying human needs my dear students especially from the 18th century from the 18th century uh, when industrial revolution took place beginning from the um, in, from england and uh, later it spread all over europe and the world there occurred you know massive uh, production of um, goods and services from the factory and industry okay that uh, uh, became able to satisfy various needs and necessities of the people okay my dear students from the from the agricultural society shifted to the industrial society along with the modification or change in the production system okay factory system started in the world when the um, different uh, machines kept on you know, inventing and with the use of such machines um, various uh, big factories and uh, industries started you know developing in the world and that uh, you know drastically changed the human society and human society entered into the industrial society okay uh, europe was the center of industrial society my dear students that is why you can see now most of the european countries are uh, industrialized countries and developed countries all right uh, there uh, also in, even in the industrial society especially uh, two uh, classes of people are found uh, one capitalist class on the laborers class or i think capitalist class and laborers class my dear students when um, massively various industries and factories started developing in the industrial era in the industrial age that created the uh, you know classes of people especially factory owners and the laborers yeah factory owners had the very you know sophisticated life is yes, they were rich and most of the resources of the uh, society uh, you know were in their hands okay and uh, whereas the laborers class they used to work in the factory and industries they had a very miser mis miserable condition they were poor they belonged to the poor class whereas capitalist class belonged to the rich class there was a great economic uh, uh, inequality or uh, economic gap between these two classes uh, because of that different uh, you know uh, conflicts began in the society uh, in order to you know uh, maintain equality especially uh, the laborers group or proletariat's groups you know began you know, revolting or um, launching different movements for their uh, rights and for um, you know uh, guaranteeing their economic rights all right uh, you know in the world this industrial society you know uh, uh, i mean to say this industrial society um, developed the in economic economic inequalities in the world so that uh, rich uh, became richer and richer poor became poorer and poorer 
and that brought several challenges in the society. Along with that, my dear students, industrial society or industrial uh, age opened the door of all round development of the society, all round development of the country. Because of industrial development, you know, various other dimensions of the society also developed. For example, you know, infrastructural sector, okay, infrastructural sector got developed, human resources, especially industrial society emphasized on the uh, empowerment of human beings, okay, because to run the factories and industries, skilled, um, educated, or uh, let's say, um, I mean to say, skilled and educated manpower or human resources were needed in running various factories and industries. As a result, um, various schools, colleges, universities, training centers were established, you know, during the industrial era. So that made the society more and more advanced, okay? As a result, industrial uh, age or industrial era, you know, opened the door of, uh, door of post-industrial society or opened the door of post-industrial society in the sense that in the process of enhancement of the society, in the process of uh, en enhancement of technology, the human society entered into the era of post-industrial society. Post-industrial society is especially marked by, marked by, you know, uh, explosion of explosion of human knowledge and blossoming of human intelligence. As a result of which, very sophisticated, you know, technology was technology started uh, regulating the human society. Now, in, in this present world, many societies have already entered into the post-industrial era, uh, which has, uh, you know, tremendously developed, especially in the field of transportation and communication. Because of ad advancement in transportation and communication, it has developed interconnectivity in the world. So, the concept of global society, global governments, you know, has taken place, okay, in this type of society. Okay, interconnectivity, especially in commerce, you know, in politics, okay, in culture, okay. Post industrial society is the, you know, climax of human society development, my dear students. Uh, Human society that started from the very hunting and you know uh, gathering age you know has transformed to the post-industrial society, which is which is associated with advancement in technology, and this advancement in technology has uh, you know made human being easier to develop you know cooperation, harmony. Okay. The concept of global society has, you know, come into existence. And this, you know, borderless society, okay, borderless society and connectivity, okay, has been developed. This connectivity and uh, global society has uh, promoted the human values, okay, cooperation, understanding among the people. That is why human society has become more and more advanced my dear students i would like to once again revise all the all uh, types of society here as i started from hunting and gathering society you know it is the simplest form of society beginning of the society but even today in this 21st century some of the societies uh, are the dominant of hunting and gathering society for example in, in India, Australia, Africa, Amazon Basin of South America, okay, uh, in such places we can even um, find this type of society, okay. Uh, Rauti of Nepal is also one of the examples of um, the hunting and gathering society. Similarly, pastoral society, uh, northern part of Nepal, okay, is the dominant of this type of society. Similarly, major grasslands of the world. Uh, Lenos of Venezuela, uh, Pampas of Argentina, Campos of uh, Brazil, 
okay and veiled of you know, south africa okay mm, these you know places still have pastoral society based on animal rearing okay these society are the dominant of pastoral society again horticultural society okay or uh, in kenya nubia southern europe okay we can see this type of society similarly agrarian society most of the countries uh, are agricultural country in the world nepal is also one of the examples of agricultural country because uh, two thirds population of the country depends on agricultural activities for their survival as you know that egypt is considered to be the beginning spot of the agrarian society or agricultural society my dear students industrial society most of the european countries even is some of the asian countries have been the industrial society okay and uh, post industrial society uh, the developed countries of the world have successfully transformed uh, themselves uh, from the industrial society to the post industrial society having said this uh, we have uh, come to the end of the class uh, my dear students thank you very much and we will meet in the next class